Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, people of God, wherever you're watching me from. Welcome here to Zibeji's blog. And thank you for watching my video. Thank you for all my subscribers. My, If you're new, kindly join the family of Zibet family. And welcome to my channel. So today's ministration, today's gist is about what Pastor Mistrel Okonko said. This used to, I remembered my childhood days too. It also replies to me. You need to have a self-esteem, good self-esteem. If not, what people say about you, you might miss it out. And I would love you to watch this video and i pray that god ministers to you no matter what people say about you even when they tell you you are fat or any negative things you overlook so watch and enjoy god bless you i would encourage us to watch this video with an open heart and i pray that god is going to enter your inner mind to understand and will touch you in jesus name Amen. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. God bless you. About myself. I was born into a family of six children. I'm not the first girl, I'm not the last girl. I'm not the first one, I'm not the last one. I'm not even the middle child. What does that tell you? That tells you that I was most likely the child who was least noticed. Now, the second issue was that I was a fat child. So I had aunties who consistently called me Isioma a Greek. Oh, and in case you don't know what that is, because when they called me Isioma a Greek the first time, I looked confused. Then my auntie tried to explain it to me. Oh, Isioma a Greek fowl. Meaning, you know, a Greek fowl. It's not like native fowl. Native fowl is, is thin. A Greek fowl. So as I'm coming, they'll say, hey, or over. And she'll be fine, girl, but she fat. So I heard this over and over again. First of all, I didn't have a position. Secondly, I was fat. Then I became shy. Extremely shy. What that also meant was that it affected my confidence in school. I was intelligent, but I would never offer the answers. So I, was, I would likely know the answer, but I would never speak up. One day I tried to brave it, and we did a test, and it was an English test, and my mom was an English teacher. So sometimes you will hear the English teacher come out, but the worry in me will not allow us to be great. Um, so sometimes you will hear the corona come out, um, but great affair will not allow me to actually be great. So, so I did this test, and it was a written test, thankfully. And so they were handing out the, the papers. You know how they would hand out papers? But they would hand it out according to grades. So they were handing out the worst to the best. And so they were handing people's own out. I mean, I was in the class, and I would sit in the middle. Um, and so they were handing out the test scripts. And then eventually, um, my teacher finished handing out everybody's own and, and handed my own last and said to me, I want you to come out and read your script because it was so good. It was an essay. And so I came out shaking, really shaking, like I couldn't even stand in front of my classmates to read the script. And I stood there and I was reading. And let me tell you the funny thing. I was very loved as a child. So it had nothing to do with my parents. It had everything to do with Satan. So that's what I'm telling you. Satan is intentional. And you know why he's intentional? He knew where I was going. He knew that I would need that confidence to be able to preach the gospel. So he started attacking it from when I was young. And so I finished reading. And the woman said to me, and you speak beautifully. What is wrong with you? And one boy at the back shouted, uh-uh, but she's just a girl now. And then it occurred to me that being a girl meant there was something wrong with me. So I added that to my list. And you see a lot of people are walking about with baggage. And that's why I said, all my message was preached this morning. I was just, you heard me when she said, I said, this girl is preaching my way. I will deal with her later, but, but for the love of God. No matter what you think you've been through, no matter what you think you have, let me tell you, God will use you if you will let him. That's why 
like she said, I'm very fond of saying nothing is off limits to God. Because everything I have handed to him, he has made it extraordinary. Everything. So, remember, no family position, fat, shy, girl, sickly. I forgot to add that. I was very sickly as a child. I was asthmatic. Um, typhoid and malaria was normal. I was in a coma for seven days because of typhoid. So at some, like every single, the attack was from everywhere. And then I was bullied a lot growing up. Now, Satan tried to do all these things, like I said, because he knew where God was going with me. And let me tell you the truth. Every single one of you in this room, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Now, you must understand that God does not always do ordinary things. So as unusual as your life may seem, God will still use it if you will place it in his hands. The things that God will use to give you platform will blow your mind. How did I know about Bumi? I knew about her because of Shredder. Probably if she hadn't been so big, she may not have started Shredder Gang. And it has given her platform such that anytime you come to her, she will put Jesus down your throat before you even say anything to her. So what Satan meant for evil, God will always turn it around for good. That's a good to celebrate God right there.